Hello, we're going to talk today about the max matching problem and minimum vertex cover problem, which are strong duals of each other, uh, in the case of biporte graphs, by using the augmenting paths algorithm. We say that a path, v1 through vk, is m alternating if the edges vi minus 1 vi and vi vi plus 1 alternate between being in the matching m and not being in the matching. We say that our path is m augmenting if it is m alternating is the first important part, but also if the first and last vertices are not matched by anything in the matching. Really, this means that, I can't, that the first edge and the last edge are not my matching, and I can't extend it by an M alternating path any further by following matched edges. So inherently, these things are maximal M alternating paths, and we can perform what's called an augmentation, where I can replace, I can improve M by replacing all the edges that are within this path with not, uh, <clears throat> all the edges that are in this path but not my matching, I can put those into the matching and all the edges in the path that are in my matching, I will leave out. So what I get is a new matching that has one more edge by performing the augmentation on this path. How we can find a maximum matching in our bipartite graph is by continually finding M augmenting paths to improve our matching size. And we can do that until we cannot find an M augmenting path anymore. And when we can't find an M augmenting path, we will output a vertex cover. So to start our algorithm, we're going to be given a matching inside of a bipartite graph at G, where our bipartition is x union y. And we're going to focus on x as being this place where we're kind of starting all of our augmenting paths. So what I'm going to initialize, I'm going to initialize with uh, all these vertices x, such that uh, little x is in a big x, and it's an unmatched vertex. And so these are all going to be the things that I can start an M alternating path starting from an unmatched vertex in X. And then I'm going to have T be an empty set, and I'm always going to be thinking about T as being a subset of Y. And R is always going to be a subset of X. Those are going to be two important things. So R is going to be the set of X, and T is going to be the set in Y. Then I'm going to have these, this function P, which I'm going to call a predecessor relationship, to say, how did I get to this vertex? using an M alternating path. Which vertex led me to put this vertex in? And so I'm going to start with them all being uh, null because these vertices here that we're already in, they, they are themselves their predecessor. They can just not have a predecessor. And I will update this as we go through the algorithm. Let's now go through our iteration process where I've already got values of R and T and P and I want to expand my set R and T. So let's pick a vertex from my set R that is currently unmarked. I'll start with everything being unmarked, and I will mark them as soon as I use them in this iteration. The next thing I'll do is I'll iterate over all the edges that are incident to X but are not my matching. Initially, I started with all my vertices not being matched, so it would be all edges, but later on I may have matched edges inside of the set R. I'm going to look over these edges, I'm going to look at my vertex y, and I'm going to see, is it in my set t? If it's not in my set t, I'm going to make x its predecessor, and I'm going to place it in the set t. And now I'm going to make some decisions. I'm going to say, is y matched or not? First, I'm going to consider if y is unmatched. If it's not a matched vertex, I'm going to output all of the vertices that I followed by following the predecessor relationship. Start at y go back to x, go to whatever y thing that it came from, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until I get to my original uh, set of vertices, and then I have a predecessor that's null. However, if y is matched, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x prime be the matched vertex, the vertex that's matched to y. I know that x prime is not little x. I know that it's not that. And I'm also going to put this little x, this x prime, into my set R, which is not there already. And I'm going to make my predecessor of x prime be y. I'm going to know that this isn't actually, this has not been set before because the only way I would put a new vertex x prime into R is through this step. 
uniquely by this set, this vertex y. And I'm going to continue this iteration. I'm going to do this for all the edges, x, y, that are not my matching. And I'm going to continue this iteration until I no longer have this, uh, any vertex x that's in R that's unmarked. In that case, we'll do a final step. So I'm going to continue this iteration until either I output an M augmenting path and I perform that augmentation to improve my matching, or this iteration, this step here, fails. So let's consider what happens when this step fails. What we will do in this case, in the termination case, we will output t, which are our vertices in y, union with x minus r, our vertices of x that are not marked yet. And this is going to be a vertex cover. The reason it's a vertex cover is that if I look at x, and I look at y, and I split it into, well, x has all these things in r. It turns out that all of my unmatched vertices are inside r, because I started that way. And then they went to all their neighbors, and all those things were matched to something that was in this set here. And what happens is that all these vertices are matched to something across the way. But none of these things got placed into T. And so somehow I've got T is over here, and X minus R is over here. And I won't have any edges spanning from R to Y minus T, because when I visited this vertex X inside my iteration, I couldn't have traveled to this vertex across here. So it turns out that X minus R union T is a vertex cover, and that's what we output. It will happen to be a minimum vertex cover because the size is going to be equal to my matching. Right? This is, these are all matched edges from X minus R, and they are not matched to things in T, otherwise I would have put them in the reverse. And everything in T is unmatched because otherwise, or is matched, because if something in here was unmatched, I would have output an augmenting path. So I do have a vertex cover whose size equals my matching in this termination condition. Next, we're going to see an example of how to perform this algorithm given a specific bipartite graph and a matching.